Hey everybody, it's Mr. Winkle, and we've been talking about the history of scientific illustration and field sketching, and I just have a couple cool things I want to show you and a couple other things I want to talk about real quick. Um, scientific illustration is really important because we're trying to represent things accurately, and from what you've seen, you've You've seen a lot of things about plants and, and anatomy and animals and things like that, but maps are also a type of scientific illustration. And I just wanted to, to share a few things with you um, that are pretty cool. So this right here, this really old looking piece of paper is um, actually a page out of an atlas. It's an atlas that was called Atlas Minor. And this page is from a book that is from 1604. So that makes this piece of paper 416 years old. It's over four centuries old. And this was originally drawn out by hand, and then it was scratched into a metal plate and then used on a printing press. And then they went in and colored it in by hand. So every book was basically handmade. And so this is really a type of a scientific illustration. It's showing us location. I believe this is an area of France we're looking at right here. Um, on the back, it's written all in old script German, so it's probably a little difficult to read. But this is a type of scientific illustration. Um, one that's even more interesting is this one right here. So this is a plant called a, that's similar to like a gourd or a pumpkin. Um, and again, this was um, originally drawn by hand and then it was made into a, a, a wood cut. So carved into wood and then it was hand colored. And this is from a, a page in a book about medicinal plants. Um, and this book dates back to 1578. So this page is actually about 442 years old. Um, and so scientific illustration goes way, way, way back. Long, long, long time. Um, another thing, this is another map. We talked about maps being a scientific illustration. Um, this one's really interesting because, first of all, it's, this isn't paper. This is actually uh, animal hide. Um, so this is the skin of an animal, probably something like a goat, I would guess. And all of the drawing and writing you see is done in pen. So somebody sat down with a pen and made this map and did all the writing on this. So this is another, this is kind of more like a field sketch um, because they did it all by hand. So those are a couple kind of cool examples from the, the, from the way far past. Um, one thing that you might be interested in is something called Grey's Anatomy. Yes, I know that's a TV show, but actually the TV show is named after this book right here called Grey's Anatomy. This book was published in 1858. It's now in its 41st edition. And this was the first really, like, really well illustrated uh, human anatomy book. I'll put a link to a video about the history of this book. Um, there's no assignment there, any writing that goes with it, but if you're just curious about the real Gray's Anatomy, uh, I'll put a link to this because it involves um, making money, it involves grave robbing, uh, all sorts of interesting stuff went into the making of this original book back in 1858. Um, we're also talking a little bit about field sketching. In other words, just drawing things kind of on the fly. Um, to represent um, important details. And what I have here, um, this is somebody's college notebook from 1925. So this is somebody's college notebook that's 95 years old. And this is a class about entomology, which is the study of insects. And in their class, what they had to do is they actually had to draw the insect. And you'll notice here that, you know, the whole insect isn't in a ton of detail, but the wing is because they're talking about how important all the different little veins and cells are on a wing. And you can see here that 
they took lots of notes, lots of handwritten information about what they were learning about that day. And so this, this notebook is actually filled with tons and tons of illustrations. Okay. You notice that this insect only has three legs. Okay. Um, because the other three legs are exactly the same, this person wanted to concentrate on, on making the, those three legs really detailed um, because we know that the other three legs look the same. So sometimes field sketches don't always include the whole animal or plant that we're looking at. They just include the details that we're trying to emphasize. Um, so this person really kind of made their own textbook by doing all the writing, all the information, and then drawing all of the illustrations by hand. Um, so this is a really cool example of um, kind of like field sketching. The last thing I want to talk about um, is, is field sketching, and um, I want to mention this guy right here. Um, you may or may not recognize him. You might have heard his name. This guy is a guy named Charles Darwin, and he's most famous for the th developing the theory of evolution and writing a really famous book called On the Origin of Species. But the reason I'm talking about him today is that um, back in 1831, um, he went on a voyage um, in a boat called the HMS Beagle, and he and his crew went around the world, um, stopping at different places and studying and collecting all sorts of things, plants, animals, fossils, you name it. Um, he was only 22 years old at the time, and this voyage took five years. So you got to think about, you know, 1831, this was a wooden sailing ship, no motor, no engine, um, and they were gone for five years. And so, you know, if you're collecting animals uh, and you want to bring them back, um, they're not going to look too good after five years. And so one thing that they did is they had um, several uh, scientific artists. A guy by the name of Conrad Martins was a landscape artist that they brought along with them to illustrate things. Now, don't get grossed out by this. Um, but this is just dumb luck that this happened. Um, I had a bird hit my window this morning. Um, here's here's the, the, the bird in question. This is a Baltimore Oriole. Um, and it's no longer with us, unfortunately. But um, the way that Darwin um, and his crew studied animals a lot was they would, you know, see an animal. Um, cameras weren't invented yet, so they would take their gun out and go bang, shoot the animal and, and take it with them. But, you know, if it's on a boat for five years, it's not going to look so good when they get home. So what they did is, you know, once, once the animal was, was dead, their illustrator could have that animal and look at it really, really closely. And they could get all the, the details. Um, and so the, the illustrator would draw or paint um, exactly what that animal looked like. Um, because sometimes by the time that the real thing got back home, it didn't look so good. So um, field sketching was really, really important for Charles Darwin when he was collecting all these different specimens of plants and animals, um, just because we couldn't preserve them very well and there weren't cameras to take pictures of them. So that's just a little history of um, uh, scientific illustration and field sketching with some cool examples I just had uh, on hand here. Um, we're going to give you guys a little bit of practice with this. And like I said, if you want to check out that history of Gray's Anatomy as a bonus, remember it's not an assignment, um, go ahead and check out that little video clip. So this is Mr. Winkle signing off.